A new CBS News report is shedding light on asylum hearings at an El Paso, Texas court. Under the Trump administration's controversial so-called Remain in Mexico policy, most migrants are sent back across the border to await a court date. Many in the El Paso area are sent to Ciudad Juarez in Mexico. Migrants often do not have access to legal counsel, and in most cases, judges have no choice but to send them back. But many are pleading to remain in U.S. jails. CBS News political reporter Camilo Montoya Galvez has been investigating, and he... joins me now from Washington. Camilo, thank you so much for joining us. In your article, you report that a Guatemalan woman named Anna pleaded with the judge to leave her in the cell. Can you describe more about what migrants are facing when they're sent back to Mexico? Yeah, Tanya, so I spent an entire day at the immigration court in El Paso, eight hours in total. And, and let me tell you that Anna's desperation the hopelessness that she evidently felt. Uh, she was not alone in that, right? You could feel that from the testimonies of the other migrants who were returned to Mexico under this controversial program, right? Um, many of them, most of them actually, come to court and are escorted into court without a lawyer, uh, like Ana, and they tell the judge, like Ana, right, I fear going back to Mexico. Please don't send me back. And the judge is almost... Uh, delivers almost entirely an identical response to each plea, right? He says he doesn't have the authority uh, to remove them from the program and allow them to stay in the U.S., right? Um, and so it, it, it really, you feel desperation, the hopelessness of the migrants uh, who, again, are not represented by any attorney in, in this, uh, during these court hearings. Uh, and you start to understand that one of the objectives of this policy, and really the administration has suggested it, is one of deterrents, right? Wearing migrants out uh, so they abandon their asylum claims uh, and head back to their home countries, and usually in so, Central America. And Camilo, when they are sent back to Mexico, are they sent to any specific location? And what is it that they fear so much about where they're being sent? Right, so this policy, which is being challenged in court, is currently in place in a couple of ports of entries and in sectors across the border. So it hasn't been expanded uh, to the entire border as of yet. It's in place in El Paso, Calexico, uh, San Diego, and some parts of the Rio Grande Valley. The migrants who cross or who seek asylum at the port of entry in El Paso are returned to Ciudad Juarez, Tanya, one of the most dangerous cities, not only in Mexico, but the, we the Western Hemisphere. Um, and so the migrants there who are returned to Ciudad Juarez struggle to find shelter, food, employment, and most importantly, lawyers that will take up their cases. So that's why when I went to court, most of them did not have lawyers. And are there camps set up in Ciudad Juarez or are there areas that are receiving all these large numbers of migrants? So, no. Uh, most of them stay in shelters uh, run by community organizers or the local Catholic parish, right? There's a really big one called Casa de Migrante, the house of the migrant, which shelters most of them. Uh, but again, you know, th this is temporary housing just designed for them to wait and sleep while they wait for the court hearing. But again, this wait is usually months long and could even— uh, you know, uh, persists for more than a year because, as you know, immigration cases uh, take a long time because the courts are such, there's such a big backlog in the immigration right. court system. And then, then are these migrants given an opportunity to work or make any sort of money to support themselves? I mean, how, how do they feed themselves? Well, that part is a little murky because the Mexican govern, government has pledged to help them while they wait in Mexico to provide them with work permits. But, you know, the, the migrants who I've talked to said that not all of them have been offered this help, right, both in terms of uh, medical care and also in work permits. So it's uh, really hard to tell, but obviously they're not getting the same help. Uh, in Mexico uh, compared to the help that they would get in shelters in the U.S. that are run, again, by community organizers in the U.S., which uh, have been helping them for, for years, right? But they can't anymore because the government is not allowing them to stay in the U.S. while their cases, cases are pending, but instead sending them to Mexico to wait there. 
So, Camilo, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Director Ken Cuccinelli has called this Remain in Mexico policy a, quote, spectacular success. Mm. Apprehensions at the southern border did drop in July. So do you think this policy is deterring migrants or are other factors at play? Yeah, I, I, the administration is undoubtedly betting on this program to deter migration at the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, apprehension numbers, which reach uh, a record high, uh, especially of families uh, in the spring and May, have dwindled in June and July, and the administration, you know, has denied that it, this is only a result of the summer heat. They said that this is also a direct result of Mexico's amped-up enforcement uh, of migrants crossing through there to get to the U.S., and they've also pointed specifically to the Remain in Mexico policy. So, yes, they, they, they believe it's been successful. Right. All right. So I also want to discuss the new immigration regulations the Trump administration announced today. Uh, the new rule means green card or visa applicants could be turned down if they are deemed more likely to be a public charge. Can you explain what that means exactly and how that would be determined? Yes. So public charge is actually a centuries-old term that was first codified in U.S. immigration law in the late 19th century. It essentially means being a burden on society, right? So for years, caseworkers have considered whether an immigrant could be a burden on society when, you know, processing one of their uh, petitions. But this rule would dramatically expand the government's definition of what is a public charge, right? The government will now consider, if this rule is enacted in October, like it's slated to, consider uh, benefits like food stamps, government-subsidized housing, uh, Medicaid's uh, prescription D drug coverage, um, and uh, other types of benefits uh, that are widely used uh, by minority groups and, and, and immigrant groups. Um, so it, it really is a seismic cha change from the way the public charge term has been applied uh, when processing immigrants in the past. And Camilla, when is this rule set to go into effect, and will it be challenged in court, do you think, before that? Right. So the official notice is set to be published on Wednesday uh, at the Federal Register, which is uh, kind of the official journal of the U.S. government. And the actual rule uh, is expected uh, to go into effect uh, in early October. Uh, but as you mentioned, Tanya, uh, we're, we're expecting it to be challenged in court by several groups. Uh, including counties, right, who are really at the forefront of this uh, because they are the ones who distribute a lot of these benefits. All right. Well, Camilo Montoya-Galvez, we thank you so much for sharing all that with us. Thank you, Tom.